Hi, and welcome. I'm Cheryl from Tiny Modernist, and today we're going to be learning how to make a boxed pincushion from the Happy Alphabet series. So here's uh, the supplies you're going to need at first to sew it together. I'm using 964. Um, it's the lighter teal from the, um, from the pattern, um, and uh, I've already got it threaded here. So this is the finished stitching. We've done J's for juggler. And what we're going to do is start in the corner and we're going to be stitching that corner piece together all the way around the outside, joining these um, edges together, which are going to form the sort of the box area. And then once those are put together, you're going to end up with this little piece folded over, uh, at which point we'll stop and stuff it. Okay, so um, I'm going to get started. I'm using the loop method here and a sewing needle, which is sharper. I like to use um, the sewing needles for the finishing. Okay, so we'll start from the back and I'm going to start with taking a little stitch in the seam allowance. And there's the loop. I'm going to go through the loop here and that just takes a nice little uh, stitch. I'm going to do it one more time just to secure the thread. So taking a little tiny stitch, run my needle through the loop and pull it tight. Perfect. Now I'm going to poke the needle through right in the stitching line here and bring the thread all the way through. And now we're going to start by sewing up that corner. So I'm going to be taking some loose stitches and then at the end I'm going to cinch them tight. So I'm going to basically start with a whip stitch, bringing my needle through one side and then the other side, but I'm not going to pull it tight just yet. I'm going to do three or four stitches first. So there's one, and then I'm bringing the needle through to the other stitch. And then again, just leaving it a bit loose. I'm going to take another couple. Yeah, one side and then on the other. Pull it through. It's almost like lacing at this point. There we are. There. And so when I pull it tight, you can see the two pieces, the two sides come together to form a, a corner, basically. So I'm going to fold it out like that, and you can see this corner starting to take shape. So now I'll just do the whip stitching all the ed all along the edge. So I'm just coming up to the edge of the, um, the end of this side. There, so you can see now there's the start of the box. And what I'm doing is I'm folding the seam allowance under um, as I go. So yeah, there's the side of the box. Now I'm working my way around again with a whip stitch, which is just one stitch on one side through the stitching line and then the needle through the other and pull it tight. It makes this nice sort of decorative um, stitched line, especially when it's a contrasting color. You can also do it in a matching color with your thread with your fabric and it's not as noticeable. Uh, so now I've come up to the end of the, the side and now here's our other um, box side. So those two pieces have to go together to form the next corner. And because I didn't want to cut the thread, um, I'm using the single thread to go, uh, single length of thread to do the whole bit here. So what's going to end up happening is that I'm working my way up this corner. The thread is going to end up finishing um, on the other edge. And I'm going to need to thread my my thread through the bottom to come back up just to avoid having to do multiple lengths of thread so at this point yeah there's the there we go so now I've done that corner and I've just run my thread through and now yeah you can see that second corner is formed now so you can just tuck all of the seam allowance in to match the next two sides. So it's forming sort of like the corner of a cube. And then I'm just going to stitch along this side again using the whip stitch. If you do run out of thread, um, it's no problem. You just uh, take a little knot in the back or in your seam allowance where the, the knot isn't going to be obvious and then restart at the same point. I cut a fairly lengthy piece of thread, but um, you certainly don't have to if you're worried about getting knots or whatever in the length of thread. So again, just continuing the whip stitch.
I'll show you another couple stitches. And then I just keep folding the seam allowance as I go. There, it's a nice little corner starting to form. There, that's a nice shot of just the needle going underneath the two sides of the, the stitching line. Yeah, so I've gotten to the end here. We're leaving a, a fairly big opening for stuffing. I'm just going to park the needle just out of the way. Um, okay, so I've actually decided to stuff it today. Um, sometimes I use fiber fill, but we're actually going to be using quilt batting. I thought because it's a square pin cushion, it might be nice to cut several squares of quilt batting. I think I've used um, seven or eight here. And I'm going to try to stuff that in um, and just to fill it up nicely there. So I've folded it in order to make it fit easy, easier. And I'm just going to work it down to the very uh, two bottom corners. This is actually a little tricky, but I, I think I'm pleased with the results. So yeah, we'll push it right through. And then I used my fingers here to, um, to really get the quilt batting into the corners. And I think if you want it to look a little bit plumper, mine is uh, is sort of fairly um, fairly flat. But if you want a plumper look, you can certainly add a bit of um, more batting or some um, uh, just cotton like polyfill to to make it a bit plumper. But um, I left mine like this. So yeah, just giving it a bit of shape, squishing the the batting into the corners, making sure it's shaped. And I like to just sort of pinch the corners here to make sure that it's um. It's got its nice like sort of crisp edges. Yeah, so we're just about done here. The last step is then obviously to fill, to uh, stitch in the, the opening. So I'm just gonna pinch the two seam allowances together and continue whip stitching along. Yeah, this is the final edge. It's just the same stitch the whole way. There, so now I'm just going to show you the last couple stitches to close up the filling. Make sure you get the, even the very last stitch so there's no holes. So now, um, this is the last corner. I guess it worked towards the end. And the very last stitch here. I'm going to do it in two stitches so they couldn't quite see the, uh, the last stitch was kind of tucked under. There. Okay, so that's it. The last thing is just to secure your thread. So I'm going to do a tiny little stitch and then run my, um, run my needle through the, uh, through the loop. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera there. Then you can snip it. I leave the tiniest little bit of a tail. You can snip um, fairly close to the knot, but make sure you don't snip your knot off. And then I just like to sort of shape it, make sure it's nice, and you're done. So you have a lovely little boxed pincushion, which can be used for decoration or um, actually for pins. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can find the complete series on stitchybox.com or look for more patterns like this on tinymodernist.com. Thank you so much.